uh, pointing to the success of the sanctions can um, help him keep the war crowd quiet. يعني انت عم تعني هون انه العقوبات ممكن ما ما تؤدي لاي قرارات بالجانب اخر يعني هذه العقوبات هل نتيجه هذه العقوبات يمكن ان تؤثر على حلفاء ايران بمعنى عدم امكانيه تقديم المساعده لهؤلاء الحلفاء وهون عم بعني بالموضوع طبعا سوريا وحزب الله Well, yeah, I think that it could create a, a problem. I mean, first of all, I would say that, um, yeah, actually, if they have a cash flow problem, they will have difficulties uh, getting money to Syria and, and Hezbollah. But it's important to note that um, uh, Iran views Syria and Hezbollah as, as sort of existential game changers. And it will uh, put a lot of resources into Syria and in support of Hezbollah Um, uh, if it comes down to it, if it sees that the Syrian regime is seriously in trouble, uh, it has indicated that it will, um, you know, really step up its support for the regime. Um, so yes, having a, a, a cash flow will hurt its ability to help, but ultimately, I think that Iran is willing to make sacrifices to help Syria, uh, to help the Syrian regime. Um, So uh, yeah, and what was the other question? عم بعني بحزب الله يعني العقوبات ممكن أن تؤثر على حلفاء إيران سوريا وحزب الله. Yeah, I, I don't think so. I think that uh, you know, I mean, in terms of will, yeah, absolutely. Syria is a, in terms of sanctions, in terms of the Western sanctions on Syria. I think that yes, absolutely. Syria is in a much more vulnerable situation. It's not a major oil producer. Um, its economy was already very weak uh, in the first place. Um, it is suffering through not just international sanctions because of uh, uh, one controversial uh, nuclear program as Iran is. It is also suffering th already through uh, a, a, tr a, a radically diminished um, uh, uh, economy, a ra radically damaged economy because of the regime's violent crackdown on uh, the opposition, because of the civil war that Bashar al-Assad has initiated against his own people. This is really hurting economy, it's hurting trade, It's even hurting trade here in Lebanon. Um, will it reduce Hezbollah's ability to arm itself and maintain a strong security posture? I don't think so. I think Hezbollah has learned a lot of tricks and they've learned uh, ways of uh, sustaining themselves. Uh, they have their own revenue sources. They don't, very likely, they don't rely on the Syrian regime for cash. Um, they have their uh, wealthy benefactors abroad, uh, and so I don't think it'll hurt Hezbollah, but it definitely the sanctions that have been imposed on Syria are hurting the Syrian economy and damaging its ability to function. يعني اليوم الموضوع السوري بدي استفيد من وجودك بورزو خاصة انك انت يعني غطيت بالملف السوري بنعرف انه ما في امكانية لوجودك بداخل سوريا من اجل التغطية اليوم برأيك من خلال ما تابعته وما قرأته هل سوريا رايحة باتجاه حرب اهلية مثل ما قرينا كتير من مقالات وخاصة من صحفيين اجانب ام سوريا رايحة باتجاه اخر No, I mean, Najat, I mean, I think Syria is in a civil war already. دخلت. يعني yeah, دخلت it's فعليا. a civil war. It's already entered the civil war phase um, and initiated by the, the regime uh, against its own people. Uh, they've declared war on, on, the, on the people. And then you have like small bands of uh, fighters who are fighting against the, uh, against the regime, uh, or trying to defend their neighborhoods and communities against the, the regime's uh, onslaught. I mean, look, you, you, you know, I mean, you even have the, two sides with two different flags at this point. I mean, that's a civil war. Two sides with two flags shooting at each other. What, what more can you say in terms of a, a civil war? One, the, 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 the Syrian opposition uses the Alam al-Istiqlal, the independence flag, and the, uh, the regime uses the, the Ba'athist flag, um, you know, against each other as they're fighting. Uh, it's, it's almost a classic case of civil war. بمقابل المشهد السوري يعني في مشهد ايضا عالمي وخاصة بالامم المتحدة الغير متحدة حاليا على موضوع سوريا يعني اين او متى يمكن ان نرى موقفا موحدا من المجتمع الدولي ومن الغرب باتجاه الموضوع السوري؟ I think that um, Bashar al-Assad has managed to turn his country into a um, Uh, a, a, a regional plaything. Uh, and so I think that as long as um, you know, Russia and China and Saudi and Iran and maybe even the United States and France to some extent view Syria as a weak battleground for uh, regional influence, 
um, they're not going to uh, 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 the, 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 they're not going to unite on anything. You know, they s the, the Russians and the Chinese see this as a regional game. You know, they see uh, losing Syria to the U.S., Saudi, French axis as a, a kind of a, a piece on the chessboard. Uh, and so I don't think there's going to be any kind of unified position on uh, هل يعني برايك انه ما في تحول بالمشهد السوري اليوم نحن باتجاه رايحين باتجاه حرب اهليه والمجتمع الدولي غير موحد على اي موقف باتجاه سوريا I don't think even if they had a unified position concerning Syria it would matter at this point you know the events on the ground have taken their own dynamic uh, the opposition is uh, desperately trying to arm itself further. Uh, the regime has uh, started using artillery and tanks and even air power against uh, civilian neighborhoods. You know, they've killed so many people at this point. How do you, you know, at that point, if you're a Syrian activist and you've lost friends and family and so on, how do you say, okay, well, we lost the game. Let's, let's stop and go back home and go to work. You're never going to do that. Um, I think this is one of the smart things that Iran did in 2009 uh, when they were cracking down on the opposition. They would jail people, arrest people, um, you know, uh, torture them even, uh, but they wouldn't kill people. Um, I think in Iran, in nine months, only 100 people were killed in that uprising. Uh, whereas in Syria, some days you have more than 100 people killed. Uh, and so they have killed so many people. The regime has, has slaughtered so many people, human beings, babies, women, children, um, that there is no going back at this point. Borzo, Daragi, thank you for your time. Thank you for your transit. Let's go to the next part. We'll be with Nicholas Nau and the Syrian American. عودة إلى متابعة ترانزيت وانضم لنا نيكولاس نو أهلا وسهلا فيك نيكولاس بترانزيت نيكولاس بدي أرجع معك إلى مقال كنت كتبته عن موضوع الشأن السوري ويعني تدعو فيه إلى مفاوضة الشيطان واللي بتقول فيه أنه الحل يقوم على محاورة بشار الأسد وبتلمح فيه إلى أنه يجب على الرئيس باراك أوباما أن يحاور بشار الأسد يعني من الناحية العملية انه اذا كان في حوار يعني لازم يكون الحوار بين الرئيس والمعارضه ولكن م. من ناحيه اخرى ايضا اوباما دعا م. لتنحي الرئيس السوري بشار الاسد هل يمكن لاوباما ان يتراجع عن هذا الموقف وبالتالي يقبل بمحاوره الاسد No I think it's impossible in an American election year to do something take a big step like this um, that is a different question from whether that is the right approach for America. And one has to remember when I'm writing an article in the New York Times about American policy, it's from the perspective of American interests. This might not be in the best interests of Lebanese, Palestinians, Middle Easterners, Syrians themselves. I was saying in general that America uh, has an interest in reducing the violence in the immediate term and then getting the regime into the machinery of negotiations, international processes to try and steadily reduce its ability to wage war and violence against its own people, much less other people in the region, Lebanese, the Israelis, Palestinians or whoever it may be. Um, that is not a very popular call in America, of course, and it's not a very popular call here in the Middle East either. I would say this though, that a lot of the internal opposition has actually been calling for exactly this kind of roadmap in Syria, a negotiated solution, a negotiating process internationally monitored with these powerful actors that all are opposed to the Syrians involved in the process with the Russians. That's a way to avoid what I think is what we're approaching, which will be a catastrophe. It'll be a catastrophe for American interests, first and foremost. I'm an American citizen and I'm writing from that perspective. But I also think it will be a catastrophe for, for Syrians, for people of the Middle East, and for the, the wider region in general. So that's, that's the purpose of the article. ولكن يعني من الناحية أخرى أيضا حتى بالنسبة للمعارضين حتى بالنسبة لسوار السوريين هل هذه الدعوة بعد لا تزال صالحة لما بتعتقد أنه تجاوز الزمن يعني كان يمكن أن يكون ذلك صحيحا ربما من ست أشهر أو ربما من سنة ولكن اليوم هل هذا الشيء ممكن؟ Well here's what I would say to that is that there never is a closed window a mythical point where there's no turning back okay 
Indeed, there are negotiations ongoing right now between America and the Taliban. The Taliban, at least in America, is regarded as one of the most uh, anti-women, uh, terroristic. They harbored bin Laden, who attacked us, killed more than 3,000 Americans. They've terrorized populations across Afghanistan. That's the narrative in America. But yet the Americans are in negotiations with the Taliban. Those have actually been broken off because of the recent incidents in Afghanistan. But I use that as a point to show you that this idea that suddenly at some point an actor like the Syrians have gone so far that negotiations are impossible, that that is a, a, a wrong way to look at it. And I would actually say right now that we're seeing a process actually of negotiations beginning. We can see Kofi Annan, we can see the UN starting to get involved, we can see the Russians starting perhaps to apply more pressure. Okay? So in other words, you know, who would have thought that after 15 years of civil war in Lebanon that the parties would be able to come to some kind of agreement? Regional balances of power changed, international balances of power changed, and the situation on the ground here in Lebanon changed, despite so much blood in this country. So negotiations are never impossible. And I think, actually, that we should always be looking towards where we can negotiate. Just a final point, which is, it's often raised um, that uh, uh, Syria and Bashar is, is like another Hitler, for example. And I would argue that there's a very fundamental difference, even if you believe that this regime, as I do, is, is extraordinarily br brutal and violent in so many ways to its own people and to the people of the Middle East in general. That said, the power that the regime has is far less vis-a-vis -vis its enemies than Hitler, for example, facing off against the French and the British. The fact that they are such a weakened actor in the overall balance of power, that should allow its opponents to be more flexible in negotiating. That means that we don't have to rush a solution and bring and demand democracy next month for the Syrian people. That means that we can be more patient in our approach. And that means at the end of the day, we have a better chance to avoid violence, which I think, as, as the main headline, that needs to be the main responsibility, is to try to avoid as much bloodshed as possible. Sometimes bloodshed, sadly, is the only way. But I think in this particular situation, there still are avenues to create a balance of power that leads, perhaps slowly, to a much less violent outcome. Because as I think a lot of us agree, we're on the edge of a very dangerous situation in Syria, in Lebanon, between Iran, between Israel. There is so much going on right now, and it's all heading in a very dangerous direction. نيكولاس يعني في كثير مقالات ايضا يعني عم تتحدث عن السياسه الامريكيه فيما يتعلق بالموضوع السوري وعدد كبير من المقالات عم بيقول وكانه هناك تراجع امريكي عن البدايه اللي كان في هيك اتجاه نحو انه يجب انهاء ما يحصل في سوريا هل هو بسبب الانتخابات الامريكيه التي تجري ام بانتظار تغير بالموقف الروسي ربما وادخال شريك I think absolutely. We're seeing right now in Afghanistan the possibility of an accelerated withdrawal. You'll notice that the Republican candidates who are running very hard against Obama, there's almost no word from them. Okay, even though if you look at it realistically, and as the I think a lot of analysts are looking at it, there is quite the possibility that Afghanistan is merely recreating the Russian, Soviet, U.S. Mujahideen uh, events in the 1980s, where there was a precipitous withdrawal by the Americans, a precipitous withdrawal by the Russians, and who filled the mix? Ultimately, the Taliban won and Al-Qaeda found safe sanctuary. Ironically, we're on the edge of doing that yet again. Now, that may be a different issue of whether uh, U.S. policy should uh, try to actively prevent that, if it can, but what I want to make the point is that in America right now, it is not a, a clear uh, club that can be used against Obama by the Republicans. And I think they're finding it, the Republicans, very difficult in this election year to make these issues even on Iran. And Iran has been so demonized in the American media that, you know, I mean, right now you have a bomb plot supposedly by a, a, a drunken Texan Iranian who's conspiring to blow up the ambassador of Saudi Arabia in Washington. This stuff is really believed you know, across the board in America, whereas in the Middle East media, we're seeing a lot more questioning of this. I think that's symptomatic of the fact that even on the issue of Iran, the Republicans, the opponents of Obama, are having a very hard time to capitalize on the retreat and withdrawal of American power in the Middle East. And I would actually say something, uh, just a point on that, is that 
I think it's more of a rebalancing. Um, and we've seen this from a lot of high-level American statements where it's not that they're withdrawing into America's borders, but the idea is that America has made a strategic decision that in the coming 5, 10, 20 year outlook, the main theater that it needs to be invested in is in Asia, is in East Asia specifically. That is where the ball game, the strategic balance of power is going to be played out in the coming decades. So I think that there's a reshifting, and that makes a lot of sense to people. And it's no. very hard for the Republicans, who have always argued for 60 years, 50 years, they've argued red China, communist China is the real threat. Well, remember when Bush came into office in 2000, before 9-11, there was an incident with the Chinese, Donald Rumsfeld said this is...